All right. Uh, my name is Eric. Uh, I always had one question when I was an intern at THQ from motion capture support, and that was uh, your flying death animation. Was it hand animated or mo -capped? Everything in Halo 1, 2, 3, and ODST was hand animated, uh, hand keyed, no mocap. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> we have some talented animators. Uh, hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this, uh, my name is Paul. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, applaud the elimination of the battle rifle. Uh, <laughs> you won't miss it. You will not miss it. Uh, um, for, and second question is, I have not uh, played it yet, but uh, I wonder if you could speak on differences between uh, Halo 3 engine slash textures versus ODST. And I have a c comment after. The, the engine is exactly the same uh, okay. from Halo 3 to ODST, but um, I think the, the big difference is that we had a full year of working with an engine was completely stable. All of our tools and technology was working right from day one. So our artists got a lot more time to polish. Right. Well, it's true that the core of the engine, it, w it was stable for us. Uh, the graphics engineers did make some enhancements. You'll see, uh, for example, in, in a huge city, we didn't want to just have open uh, windows. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, so I think Chris Chu went on the internet where uh, all great ideas are born. And he found this, uh, I think, a, a white paper on something called uh, some advanced parallax mapping technique that could be used to create virtual spaces or virtual worlds behind a surface. And we're like, he was like, hey, that's cool. I can make buildings out of that. So uh, he showed it to Justin uh, as a, at a prototype stage, and he was like, we must have this. So uh, that's why this, the, the buildings look so much richer. It's, a, it's actually a trick using parallax mapping, which they've enhanced, uh, and we'll be using it uh, on future projects. And then we also got um, uh, some other graphics uh, niceties. Uh, including like the ability to fade uh, effects uh, so that plasma and things like that behave a lot more realistically in the game. Uh, so, and then of course then we have um, uh, full screen uh, effects shader system as opposed to just screen effects. And so that's what enables visor mode. So there's, there's a reason why the game looks different than Halo 3 even though it's, you know, it's the same physics engine and same rendering pipeline. It's the graphics technology has been upgraded. Uh, and it was used as a springboard for what we're going to do on future projects. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, no, no, just a real quick comment. Uh, when can I buy you all a round of beer? <laughs> I'm thirsty now. <laughs> <laughs> Parched. Hey. Hi, I'm Joswell. Um, I'm kind of on my final stretch on uh, free space on memory for my Xbox 360 hard drive. And so I'm just wondering, on the Halo 3 multiplayer disc, will all the maps be playable from the disc, meaning I can delete the pa map packs from my hard drive? Yes, that is correct. You can delete all the map packs after you buy ODST, and it just all, all right. runs off the DVD. All 24 maps are on there. Good all question. Right. All right. And I'm surprised you didn't mention this with the comment about the Mac thing earlier, but uh, that the original Halo was supposed to be on the Mac as an RTS. That is correct. No, that actually is, believe it or not, that's not correct. We, we were developing oh. it right from the beginning on PC and Mac. Mm. It was introduced at Mac World uh, as, as going to be on the Mac, but it was going to be always going to be simultaneously Mac and PC. That's the actual truth. Right. So, and, and we, we stopped, it was never an RTS, seriously. It went right into a third person shooter, I think, almost within weeks of beginning uh, development on it. And then it turned into first person shooter because we couldn't make third person fun at that moment. <laughs> It's true, but why you gotta crush a young man's dreams? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Yep. Hi, uh, my name's Ray, and I have two questions. Um, right before the release of Halo 3, we saw videos of a live-action Halo clips, and I was wondering, is there ever gonna be a movie? <laughs> yeah, that was District 9 that it turned into. <laughs> <laughs> Which I can say was an awesome movie. Neil's very talented. And in a lot of ways, because I think the sci-fi genre needed a kick in the nuts, I'm glad he made that movie instead of the Halo movie, frankly. Um, it was a really great film. Though I would have loved to see him do the Halo movie too, but I'm glad he got a shot to make District 9. Um, but uh, there is some cool stuff today that just debuted on IGN, um, which is a new campaign, an ad campaign, um, produced by Microsoft, with help from us, some other really talented people. Um, so I think it gets on IGN today, and a longer version is gonna go up on, what is it, Spike or G4 on Monday, right? Spike. 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 Play it. Play it. Uh, 
we would have loved to do it. We did not get permission to do it today because IGN has it exclusively. But if you go up on their site, it's that MacBook thing again. <laughs> what was that? Someone said pull up the site. <laughs> oh yeah, pull up the site. Do we have Actually, any? I think we have to cut your second question off. There's a lot of enforcers starting to gather, and uh, we've we run. There's another panel that starts in five minutes. So, it's like, it's like Marty, what are you going to play us out with here? All right, we'll play a little ODST theme music, and everybody should start leaving. I think. Thank you, everybody, Thank for you coming out today. Thanks, everybody.